what's up guys sorry for the video um, on a GoPro GoPro I love GoPros uh, but they I mean I can configure I think not to be a wide angle but I like wide angle when I'm riding the car so those are the three videos that I'm gonna uh, record on this guy here until I get uh, my Canon G7X camera back I broke mine I don't know how but uh, it's gone unfortunately sadly uh, in this video we're gonna configure the I'm gonna show you how to configure the sensors uh, the temperature sensor so as you see in the car my car has two sensors one is right here and this sensor here uh, goes to the gauge for some reason if you send the gauge one uh, the same signal to the ECU the ECU doesn't like it um, the gauge doesn't like it either the ECU kind of is kind of fine but I have another sensor here which is the OEM and it's right down there you can see and this routed all the way through the car and to the ECU which is right there and there is a very simple way to configure to calibrate this guy in there and that's what we're gonna do right now all right so you can see my face here I gotta have this microphone right on my face so you can hear my voice otherwise it doesn't work so in here in the screen uh, if you go to tools you should see uh, calibrate thermistor tables um, and you click in there and you're gonna see coolant temperature sensor and air temperature sensor okay so coolant temperature sensor of course as it says is a coolant temperature sensor and what you do here is you go to Fahrenheit and here we have two options one is you have a three-point generator which you put three points in here uh, there are some options already so if you have a GM in this case here this is for my Mitsubishi um, so it populates for you 2490 and then here you have the values if it's uh, minus 40 temperature this is the resistance in ohms and then it keeps going okay um, you get for for example GM um, and then you have for example Toyota that I'm using um, I'm not quite using this one on my 2JZ but this is what you do once you're done you click you click right into contr to controller and then this is gonna send this data here to your ECU so your ECU knows what to do um, when the temperature gets to 86 for example so it knows that if you have a resistance of this amount of ohms in here is 86 so we can calculate by itself uh, between 86 and 210 uh, degrees Fahrenheit right you set here to Fahrenheit it knows how many ohms it should be so it creates a table internally on the other hand what I've done is I create a ink file which is just a text file and I have this uh, comments up here so I know where it is and I know that the first few is temperature second temp se second few is uh, ohms and then here I have uh, minus 13 is this value minus 4 is this value and so on right how did I get that I got a sensor uh, put into the freezer got into a, a negative value and then I start measuring the ohms um, as they were <laughs> someone keeps messaging as they were um, it was heating up I was get grabbing the ohms that uh, it was sending between negative and positive so of course I put in a pan heat up the pan all the way to 257 degrees so I know that this was the value um, there are different ways to grab this some some uh, suppliers might give you uh, this table here which is great but some of them won't so if you do that you just say here custom ink file and then you just find it and be happy right get it there I put inside the INC folder and then we put it in here next video you're gonna do the AEM so we're gonna look into that later but this is how you configure do not forget when you're done write to the controller 
and when you start the car or when you only plug the ECU in the car you should be able to see uh, coolant temperature here and if you are correct that coolant temperature will match what the actual coolant temperature is uh, the other option the other thing is the manifold uh, air temperature so it's the same place you go to calibrate thermistor and you change here to air temperature and here of course you can do both ways you can either use the three point or you can either uh, you can use the custom and that's the same thing you just find your brand uh, Bosch whatever it is and boom it's gonna add the values there for you so uh, three things you need to do I'm gonna I have three videos one for TPS which is here one for the thermistor and one for the AFR of course if you have map and other things you just click in there the map usually comes from comes on the ECU so this is default you keep this guy here uh, MPX 4250 uh, usually if you research what your ECU is is going to tell you which uh, of those sensors are there but uh, yeah just uh, don't forget to calibrate this guy and this guy and the AFR before you start anything because this is important you need to be sure that the information you're grabbing uh, on your logs uh, are correct all right all right thanks for watching this video i hope this helps you three short videos uh configuring the throttle position uh the tps throttle position sensors three small videos configuring the throttle position sensor which is this guy right here and where is zero where is a hundred percent so it's pretty simple watch the video that i post before this one this video here is for the temperature sensors uh so we have those two we did right now and the next one is going to be for the afr uh sensor so some afrs you're going to have data um so you can do what i what i'm going to show you some afrs you don't so you also can do what i'm going to show you don't forget to hit that little uh, subscribe button and the little bell um, so you can watch the next videos and see what's going on this here is ripping it's around it has around 533 horsepower that's what the app uh, measured I mean even though I'm not on a dyno uh, the measurements are the same so you have speed rpm and uh, gear so yeah so even though I mean if it's not 533 it's gonna be very very close little more little less but this is a beast so you don't want to lose it you don't want to so you don't want to miss it hit those little subscribes and let's so don't forget to hit the little button button dang boy i must say it's pretty hard to record without seeing what i what I have what I'm doing because um, then it's just me talking <laughs> to a camera I never thought about that but that's actually happening right now so don't forget to subscribe watch the next video which is going to be calibrating the AFR so those videos are going to be related to tuning as you see uh, my laptop is up there I'm going to go to the office to record the rest because I'm going to cast the screen so it's easier for you all right take it easy guys see you later status.